Hello. Welcome to my man cave. So it's Q and A time. Um, if you saw last night, I put it up on my Instagram. Um, all about Q and A time. There's some amazing questions. All a good vary of about supplementation, training, nutrition, goals for this year. Uh, so we're going to delve straight into it. So first is the ice bath. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Toe dipping. Turn the sauna on. Get that heating up. Get your phone out for these questions. I'm not fucking ready for this today. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, whose idea was this? <laughs> Ready for that one? <laughs> you do me Wim Hof breathing. How are you going to read these questions? Let me just acclimatise first. <laughs> Let me make it look easy. It's been helping you though with recovery, right? This has been amazing for recovery. I'm not just saying it; been absolutely fantastic. So we've been doing a lot of cold water, hot water therapy. So in here for as long as I can, into the sauna for as long as I can, back into here, back into the sauna, finishing jacuzzi. So. Um, I don't want to talk too much about injuries, I don't want to be negative, I don't want to put it out to the world, but I am struggling with a few things. I, I've got a slight tear to my lat, uh, which has not been great, and that's because I was overtraining it, because I know I have to bring my back up for the Olympia, and when I put my mind to something, I go uh, balls out, and it kind of a, a little tear to basically slow me back down and bring me back to, to earth. So this is what we're doing. We're resetting, hence why I've had a little bit of time off. We have about four weeks off in total from the gym and then we're gonna hit it all when we get back. So recovery is key. But we're gonna get into the questions now. So the first question, which is quite an easy one, this is gonna be yeah, quite a good one. How's Alfie? <laughs> That's from Thomas. Um, Alfie is amazing, mate. He is 20 months now, so we're coming up to that terrible two stage. And I think we are starting to experience it a little bit, but in himself, he's amazing. He's very polite. I'm very proud of him, no matter what anyway, but I'm very proud of him. Um, he's starting nursery now. He's developing very well. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more proud. Um, next question, which this your next competition? So, Thinking is which is this your next competition this year? <laughs> um, my next competition is the Olympia uh, in December, so we're in June now. Um, having a little time off, and then we are going to hit it hard when I get back. So we got two weeks away uh, with the family, first family holiday, and then we're going to really, really knuckle down for like 20 weeks. I normally do a 12 to 16 week diet, but this one I want to yeah be extra, extra motivated for. Uh, um, this, this is not really a, a question, but I, I think it's right to say something about it. Um, bro, I'm a big fan. Uh, your love your new home. Um, yeah, it's nice. Yes, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm very proud of it. Again, it's something I do on the side and I don't really publicise too much. I like to renovate houses. I've done quite a lot of them in the past. I will show this renovation. I've done some videoing from start to finish. Granted, it's filmed by me off my camera so it wasn't it's not great footage but it can show you where it came from to what it is now um trying to get another project in the background amy's spitting feathers thinking i'm going to take even more on but it's just a release from the industry from the sports world uh, and from what i do day to day to to renovate houses so i love it um but yeah proud of this project um i would have moved on by now but amy won't let me so this is going to be our family home for quite a while now and obviously the man cave is a, is a good indicator of me staying. <laughs> this is a question I was gonna skip over and I'm not gonna because I think it does deserve an answer to it. So how come people don't talk about PEDs on their channel and social media? So PEDs, for people who don't know what that is, is performance enhancing drugs. Um, and to be honest, this is from Sam Crowley. To be honest, I think you'll be surprised how many people do talk about it now. Uh, when I was in the, when I first came into the industry, it was, something you couldn't speak about it was something that was brushed under the carpet and you kind of look down upon if you did speak about it but i think the industry is getting so big now and 
a lot of teenagers are coming into it, a lot of youths, and I think they need to know that. So a lot of influencers do talk about it now. Granted, some people can't because of sponsorship obligations, um, so you don't really look down on them for that, but um, it's something that is becoming more apparent um, in this in this industry now. Next question. Okay, this one's from Jonah. Uh, we've got Ryan. What would be your top three supplements for an intermittent lifter? Thanks, mate. Um, I would say, so it doesn't matter if you're advanced, uh, if you're a beginner or intermediate, I would say the top three is a good whey protein. So it doesn't have to be an isolate. A whey protein concentrate will do the job. Um, just basically for the absorption rate um, after training um, and in the day between meals and stuff if you need a, an influx of, of protein. But if you was to eat a solid meal, which by the way, solid food always supersedes any supplement, but if you were to eat a solid protein source, it would take three to four hours for the body to digest it. Whereas if you have a liquid whey protein, which is very fast acting, you can get it into the body within an hour and it's it's basically feeding the nutrients into the body that it needs, recovery, and um, yeah, it's, it's gonna make you work at optimal level. So whey protein for definite. I think a creatine is, um, is important if you're trying to grow muscle tissue, um, increase your strength in the gym, and it's the only proven uh, supplement that actually works, proven supplement that actually works. So creatine is, is important uh, for that, and male and female can take that as well. A lot of people think creatine is just for males, but it's not at all, male and female can take that. And then I'd say a good multivitamin, a high dose sports multivitamin. So when you're training the way you are, eating the way you are, I think it's important to get all the nutrients in. Um, training is key, but nutrition is, is more important. So getting all your solid foods in um, and then supplementing that with a, a good strong multivit will be perfect. So they're the three supplements I would uh, advise taking. I'm gonna move on now. I'm gonna go into maybe the infrared sauna uh, and we'll carry on with this talk in there. Nickel Mans. Join Daddy off. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Right, guys. So the first question I think could be quite funny in here. Um, can you bounce your pegs? I think so. I've never done it. Is that working? Yeah, I reckon so. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right. Next question. So thoughts on having a second baby? Um, so yeah, we have talked about it. I think it would be really nice uh, for Alfred to have a sibling. Uh, I grew up with siblings and I, I think it's quite important for the development and yeah, I think it'd be great. Um, but as it stands, we haven't planned in the near future just yet. We're gonna enjoy Alfie. He's still only a year and a half old. So we kind of want to give all our time to Alfie first. Um, I've got a lot of, of work on as well with, with four new business startups. So for me, I really want to be able to get all this off the ground so then I can take a step back and enjoy my family and, and start delegating the businesses and, and be able to step back from everything before we have a second one. So it says, who are two of your fitness icons? So I would say Flex Wheeler for bodybuilding physique. Even though I never wanted to be a bodybuilder, I thought he had um, a phenomenal aesthetic physique, uh, very pleasing and I am a big uh, follower of bodybuilding. Um, I'd say Flex Lewis for work ethic. Um, I always respected how much uh, time he put into his fans, expos, he was always uh, the last one to leave and I always thought that's how I'd want to mimic myself if I ever got to that status. Um, and third, I'd say Chris Bumstead. I think he's done phenomenally well. Um, not only for himself, but for the sport as well. I think he, he really helped classic physique become what it is now. Um, he's been amazing on social media. To see him rise through, um, he's, I think he's at 8 million followers now. He's got this huge cult following. And yeah, he's, he's very positive. He's very open about like, the negative side of bodybuilding as well, which I think um, a lot of people have, have not really touched on before, how it can affect you mentally. I know he's unhealthy in the past and how he's um, overcome them and he's, he's talked about it. So yeah, I think those three are what I would say. So Callum's asking, will you be at the Arnold Classic this year? I'm guessing you mean the UK, Arnold UK. At the minute, 
I haven't got a reason to be there because I'm not competing there this year, I'm saving myself for the Olympia and my sponsors aren't at the show. But if I can find a reason to be there, um, I will try and be there. I, I love that show actually, last year was amazing. Obviously I was competing, obviously I've got good memories from winning it, but the expo itself, like it felt like it used to be, like the body power used to be in its early days and there was a big buzz about it. The, the brands really got behind the, uh, the expo. So I would like to be there again, but just not fully confirmed yet. So have you ever had bicep tendonitis? And if yes, what did you do to recover from it? Um, so yeah, I have suffered with every form of tendonitis, but bicep tendonitis, I have actually suffered with that. Um, I was trying to do a muscle up uh, stupidly um, back in Germany a few years ago, showing off male ego and yeah i kind of I, I developed tendonitis in both of my bicep tendons so um very painful i do feel sorry for you um i used a lot of um gels back then um i would recommend something now called re plus uh, my friends just brought out a physio who who's worked with me now for four or five years and he's developed something which is is phenomenal for for tendonitis and for muscle recovery so i would try to to take su supplements or, or products uh, as well as resting it as best you can, getting deep tissue work on it if you can, just to try and get blood into the uh, into the tendons and to, to get them working again, um, and to not overtrain them as well. Really listen to your body. You're just going to keep setting yourself back if if you uh, if you don't listen to your body. Right, guys, it's too hot in here. We're going to move on. We're going to answer some more questions in the jacuzzi. Get some lights on. Ooh. Right, so this one's from Matty, and will you be coaching yourself again for the Olympia or bringing someone on board? So I'm going to be coaching myself, uh, Matty, um, because I prepped myself for the Arnold Classic and I wanted to make myself accountable and have some belief in myself that I could do it, and it was the best prep I ever did. Um, my training, nutrition, um, everything went back to basics and it was just phenomenal, the way I looked, the way I felt, the way I pumped up was everything I wanted to be. So I really want to mimic that on the Olympia stage this year and see if that's what I was missing all these years um, on the Olympia stage. Also, I've got RT Coaching now um, and that's a coaching service and it's something I'm very proud of. And all the things that I implemented into my Arnold Classic prep is now being put into my coaching service. So these are all things that I'm learning um, no matter how educated or no matter how experienced you are, you can always learn and that's what I'm willing to do. So uh, yes, I'll be prepping myself this Olympia. So this is from Jono Stevens and it's asking, should you reduce or cut out creatine completely when trying to cut? So from personal experience, I wouldn't cut out creatine if I'm cutting um, and I wouldn't lower the dose either. Um, the reason being is the body needs a certain amount each day for it to work effectively. So I would keep that in uh, the only thing I would suggest or what I would possibly do is when I'm cutting, because the creatine monohydrate, which most people use, uh, is water-based, it will give that slight, soft, like um, watery feel. Not massive amounts, but if you're really conscious about it and you want to be dry for a specific day, I would possibly cut it out a few days or a week before. So when I'm competing, i.e. stepping on stage, I'll cut my creatine a couple of weeks out, but it's um it's not essential to do that you don't have to do that but if you were really really anal and you wanted to keep your creatine right up to competition day you could actually change the creatine source to like an, a creatine ethyl ester rather than a monohydrate which is oil based and you wouldn't get that like watery feeling um bca versus eaas this is from Jono again actually so i've just seen that uh, what's the difference and which would you opt for so this is difficult because there's no proven science behind all of this. I was I always took BCAs. Before EAAs, I was always BCA, uh, and I always had it fasted. I was classed it as a, a non-fasted product. So when I was dieting before um, my fasted cardio or before training, I'd always have my BCAA. When studies came out about EAAs and the essential nine essential amino acids, I thought, you're getting all your BCAs as well as these other aminos which we're being told we need. So I I switched to EAAs and I've been taking that now for about three years. Um, but if I'm brutally honest, I don't, there's no science to say 
either actually work or one's better than the other, but it's better to have it in than not. That's how I look at it. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna wrap these up soon uh, because I'm turning into a little prune so I need to get out of here. But how many sources of income do you have and what are they for? So this is something I actually did just recently on YouTube. So I'm gonna put the link up so you can go uh, check it out. But um, yeah, I've, I've got rentals, um, my RJT Limited, which is a lot of my sponsor obligations. Um, I've got RT Grips, so all like gym accessories. I've got Alta, which is board shorts, uh, eBooks. So I've got, yeah, a lot of different um, income sources coming in. Right, so this isn't uh, a question, but I quite like this, so uh, I'm gonna do this to finish. So this is from Malaysia, wow, from Malaysia. So it's your majesty who's from Malaysia. Uh, my wife, Joa Quim, or Jo Quim, is your biggest fan. Please say hi to her. Hi, yeah. <laughs> but I beg to differ, I don't think you are my biggest fan because I dare say this guy who stalked me, who's finally got, <laughs> got his way and is now my cameraman, is my biggest fan. <laughs> but thank you anyway, I appreciate it. Right guys, we're gonna wrap this video up here because I need to get out. It's the middle of the day and Amy's gonna kill me for just sitting in my shoes all day. So, thank you for watching this video. Uh, again, I just wanted to give you an insight into what you guys wanna know from me. So that's why we did the Q&A. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to. I'd really like you to, to be honest. Uh, comment below, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da!